joy in the city joy in your life joy in your family and joy everywhere in jesus name gck authority has announced the next level move from the land of honor and integrity comes two in one gck live in Ekiti State, Southwest Nigeria, the Global Crusade and Retreat, December 22 to 27, 2022. A new level of Impact Academy for youth, young adults, and professionals. Titled Recharge to Excel, December 27, 2022, at 0600 hours GMT. All broadcasts live on satellite, radio, television, and all our social media platforms with Jonathan White. Our guest music minister, GCK, the gospel to every creature. Our Father, we thank you for bringing us to the conclusion of our Congress this year. Thank you for the many blessings you have given us. Thank you for many hands that served you. And for the various people that did their best to make this Congress the success under the grace of the Lord. We are praying, O oh Lord, every one of us will continue to be blessed by you in Jesus' name. We pray, O oh Lord, that as we bring everything to a conclusion for this year, all the blessings we have received will continue with us in Jesus' name. And we pray that all you want us to be, all you want us to do, as we go back to our various campuses, we will do or will be in Jesus' name. Help us now, Lord, not to forget all the challenges we have received here and to keep on following you, even to the very end. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. From Psalm 57, reading from verse 7. Psalm 57, verse 7. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Here the psalmist tells us that he was determined to serve the Lord. He had known the Lord. He had experienced the joy of salvation. He had experienced the transformation that comes through grace. He had experienced the power of God through prayer. He had gone through many situations and circumstances of life, and he had overcome. And he looked at everything and he said, obviously, it's the best thing for me to remain in the Lord. And then he said, whatever may still come, whatever may be waiting for me around the corner my heart is fixed oh god my heart is fixed he directed that word of commitment and consecration unto the lord he said oh god my heart is fixed in the passage of time he had to repeat that same consecration and commitment again in Psalm 108, verse 1, still virtually saying the same thing, expressing commitment, consecration unto the Lord. O oh God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise even with my glory. Being a king, he had obviously some things that other people saw and referred to as glory and yet he said even with my glory with everything good everything positive that i have i'm going to give praise unto the lord my heart is fixed in psalm 1 1 2 112 is repeating the same thing but now he's saying, talking about the righteous. The righteous that would always be remembered by the Lord and by the people whose lives have been affected by his righteousness. He said in verse 7, 
he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. So you will see as we come to the end and the conclusion of this uh, Congress, we're talking about the heart being fixed. The fixed heart. Or to say directly in the language of the psalmist, my heart is fixed. Now, that statement tells us three things. Number one, constancy. Number two, courage. Number three, continuity. Constancy. You see, for a person to say my heart is fixed, it means I'm going to remain constant with the Lord. Not only that, looking at the things that might come against him and at the circumstances of life, for a person to say my heart is fixed is talking about courage. And when somebody says my heart is fixed, it's also telling us I have started and I'm going to continue till the very end and my heart is fixed. That's why we're considering three points. Number one, the constancy of a fixed heart. Number two, the courage of a fixed heart. Number three, continuity of a fixed heart. I don't know about the subject uh, you studied, but I know the one I studied. And uh, very common with the subject I studied to talk about constants and the variables. And uh, generally we'll say, let it be X or Y or Z. We're talking about variables. When of a constant, we generally say A or B or C. And uh, when you are talking of A, the abiding one, the one that is constant, the one that is not shifting base, the one that is not a variable, the one that says, you saw me here on this same ground before, when you come again, you are going to see me on this same ground, I'm standing my, my pose, and it is constant. The variable, that's the vacillating ones. Those are the people that they are unstable. They are unsteady. You cannot find them in the same place. As I look at the psalmist, I see constancy. And I see here, he says, I am not a kind of unstable soul, vacillating soul. I'm not of the variable kind of mode or model. I remain constant. And when you think about such people, they are the people that matter in life. They are the people that have conviction and they carry it through. And it doesn't matter where you find them. It doesn't matter where you put them. They are the same. Always the same. They know that what they have believed is the genuine thing. What they are standing upon is the real thing. They know that they got it from heaven and therefore there is no reason to change. Daniel was such a man like that in Daniel chapter 1. Reading from verse 8. Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. But Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. At the time of this statement and this event I've just read to you, Daniel was a science student in a foreign land, university. And you see, they are taking them captive away to Babylon. They are taking them away from their land. And then Nebuchadnezzar needed some students that will study the Chaldean language and also that will study some scientific things. And so Daniel was chosen among them, together with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I want you to look at it from verse 3. And the king spake unto Ashpenaz, the master of his eunuchs, that he should bring certain of the children of Israel, of the king's seed, and of the princes, children, in whom was no blemish, but well favored, and skillful in all wisdom, and cunning in knowledge, understanding science, and such a sad ability in them to stand in the king's palace, whom they might teach the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. 
And so you will see he was a student. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you'll find the mention of their names in verse 7. They were chosen among them as well. As they found themselves in the foreign land and in the foreign institution, they saw that some of the cultures in that institution, they were not exactly the cultures they had been taught in the way of the Lord. They saw that the lifestyle and the social things over there, they were not according to the words they have learned in the word of God. They saw that the culture of the land had root in idolatry, had root in evil, had root in immorality. And although they accepted the study, because the study itself is something neutral, like the study of the language of the Chaldeans, like the study of the development of knowledge, technical knowledge. If you read uh, the an expert, uh, you know, about, about the experts and the historians, they will tell you about the seven wonders of the then world. And you will find that architecturally, Babylon had developed to such a great level. And when these children were brought in, teenagers, they still were at that time, uh, the king of Babylon, he wanted some of them to have a taste of the development of the science, of the technology, of the language, the linguistics in Babylon. And so they were chosen, but when they found themselves there, they remembered, we are not like the rest of the students. We are not like the rest of the people. And Daniel watched very well. He saw what they were eating, that what they ate was first of all sacrifice unto idols. And then he said, although we know that this is a recommendation for the student body, and of course the student union there, if they had student union, they were there to make sure that everybody followed through and did everything. The authorities of that institution, controlled by the king, by Nebuchadnezzar, that they will follow everything that they have been given. And yet, Daniel, observing everything, looking at everything, looking at the conviction he had within, looking at the knowledge he had got from the Lord, looking at his experience in the Lord. He must have called Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he must have said, we are not many. Our believers fellowship here is very small. And in comparison with the student body here, they are very large and we are very small. And also they had some different, different groups over there. Because you'll see if you read from chapter 2, you will discover that among the student body there, there were magicians. There were occultic people. And whenever when Nebuchadnezzar later had this problem, the graduation had been done at the end of chapter 1. But they kept the best of the students to stand for the king and with the king. And because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and Daniel, they were the very best of the students, they chose them as part of them. They picked also the other students after they had graduated and who had become exceptional in their examination. They picked them. But from the things that happened later, we knew that those other students, they practiced occultism. We know that those other students, they were into magic. And yet, when the problem of the king came, they could not help the king. But then, come back to the student days of Daniel, of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. When they found themselves on the campus, and they saw that the lifestyle of the student body was not exactly like they had been taught in the word of God. Daniel proposed in his heart and he said we will not defile ourselves I will not defile myself with the portion of the king's meal he had a fixed heart constancy constancy in conviction constancy in worshiping the Lord constancy in obedience to the word of the Lord. He will not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. The meat was free. The food was free. The wine was free. They were virtually on scholarship. And it wasn't a kind of bursary that only managed to give them something for their tuition, the tuition, the lodging, accommodation, everything paid for necessities, luxury, everything paid for. And Daniel said, although it is free, although it is part of the scholarship we have been given, yet we are not going to allow this kind of scholarship, and we are not going to allow this kind of provision, 
We are not going to allow this kind of money that is coming to us to defile us. Therefore, he purposed in his heart. He will not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. I told you they were in Babylon. And it wasn't only Daniel that took that decision. I want you to look at Psalm 137. In Psalm 137, we're reading from verse 1. By the rivers of Babylon, there we search. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they, can, they, they that carried us away captive required of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us mirth. Sing, sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Can you see constancy here? The people that carried them away captive, they said, if your God is alive, why did he allow us to carry you away captive? If that God is powerful, why are you here? What are you doing here? Why are you our slaves? If your God is stronger than our idols, why did our idols support us? We conquered you and your God was not able to deliver you. Therefore, forget about your religion. Forget about uh, what you are practicing before. In fact, why don't you just give us something, a social night tonight, and sing unto us one of the songs of Zion. And then they realized, because the nation had seen, that is the reason why the Lord had allowed them to be carried away captive. But the faithful ones, the dependable ones, the steadfast ones, the people that will not compromise, they said, although we are here, because of the sin of the nation. It doesn't mean that because the nation sinned, everybody actually had sinned. Because Daniel was different. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were different. And these ones were different. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a straight land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. You see here, Constancy, the people said, If I forget thee, Jerusalem, the temple in Jerusalem, the teaching I got in the temple of Jerusalem. If I forget you, let my right hand forget the writing of the alphabets. Let my right hand forget the putting down of the knowledge I ever had. Let all the education I have got, let it be blotted out rather than forget the temple in Jerusalem. Rather than forget the teaching I got in the temple in Jerusalem. In verse 6, if I do not remember thee, let my tongue cling to the roof of my, of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Constancy. Constancy. The people that wanted to remain with the Lord and they decided they were going to remain with the Lord come back to Daniel. We're not looking at Daniel chapter 6. I told you that in chapter 1 he was still young, like a teenager. But then chapters 2 and 3 came, chapter 4 came, chapter 5 came. By the time you get to chapter 6, he had become an aged man, an older man. And yet we see constancy now in his conviction. What he was in chapter 1 when he was young, he still was in chapter 6 when he was much older. He wasn't a student anymore now. He was like an administrator. He was now like a governor. He was now like a president of a subsection of the whole uh, empire. In uh, chapter 6, let us look at it from verse 1. It means Darius to search over the kingdom and 120 princes which should be over the whole kingdom. They divided the whole land, the whole kingdom, into 120 provinces. And there were princes over them, like councillors over those local governments. And then over these three presidents, that is, all the 120 provinces were redivided or grouped into three. And there were presidents over uh, about 40 here, 40 here, 40 there, if they were divided equally. Of whom Daniel was forced that the princes might give accounts unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel, 
was preferred above the presidents and the princes because of an excellent spirit was in him and the king thought to search him over the whole realm the thinking was even planning that now he will become the prime minister he had he had been a student he had passed out he had been an advisor to the king of babylon he had been a personal counselor to all the kings that came he was a personal counselor to nebuchadnezzar he was a personal counselor to uh, belshazzar and now darius came the third king that came having the empire he now was also there he was one of the three and then he was not thinking to even promote him because righteousness exalts a nation righteousness exalts a man and so here he was to have been promoted and then the princes and the presidents must form a sort of invocation against daniel concerning the kingdom but they could find none occasion no fault for as much as he was faithful neither was there any error or fault found in him constancy of a fixed heart you see there are people they may be following the lord when they're students and then immediately they pass out and they go for their use service and then they just uh, go astray they do not follow the lord anymore they say well i am now a graduate as if he has got something she has got something that others have not got before or maybe during the youth service they are christians and then after the youth service instead of joining the local church in town they feel they are too big now to worship for the local church because now they are graduates but you see here daniel he continued to follow the lord even till old age he was faithful he was just he was holy he was righteous and although the people were jealous against him they couldn't find any fault in him nor error in him verse 5 then said these men we shall not find any occasion against this daniel except we find it against him concerning the law of his god then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king and said unto him king darius live forever all the presidents of the kingdom the governors the princes the counselors the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute decree and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days except of thee save of thee o king shall he shall be cast into the den of lions now they told a lie here they said all the presidents of the kingdom have agreed on this daniel was not in that secret meeting it was conspiracy daniel was not there and yet they brought you to the king and he said everybody has agreed on this thing we're going to make an edict we're going to have a firm decree we're going to establish a statute that nobody in this uh, kingdom will pray to any god at petition of any god for 30 days only 30 days not too many not much 30 days and then it says now O king establish the decree sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the medes and the persians which altereth not wherefore king darius signed the writing and the decree daniel was in trouble but you see when you are a constant a person that is constantly following the lord a person that is steadfast all those edicts will not bother you all those edicts will not worry you you will know that whatever is at stake out is on his own and in verse 10 now when daniel knew that the writing was signed he went into his house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward jerusalem because that was according to the prayer of solomon that if the children of israel were carried captive into a strange land if they will pray in that land and face jerusalem O lord please answer from heaven and god said i will answer that you will find in second chronicles chapter 7 we have no time to read that now but you see over here he opened his window towards jerusalem he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his god 
as he did a full time constancy as he did a full time constancy you see the constant soul the one that really wants to follow the lord he keeps on following the lord is not like an unstable person an unstable person cannot really excel a person that is always changing like a chameleon today he believes the word of god he dresses like a child of god she dresses like a real born again person and then one week after she has changed again you see those unstable people they will never excel in the kingdom of god in james chapter one james chapter one verse eight it says a double-minded man a double-minded woman too is unstable in all his ways i pray you are the stable constancy of a fixed heart in job chapter 17 job 17 verse 9 the righteous also shall hold on his way and he that has clean hands shall be stronger and stronger stronger and stronger i pray that such constancy the lord will give every one of us in jesus name and no matter the wind that may blow no matter the rain that may fall no matter the force the enemies that may surround no matter the opposers and those who contradict the truth that were received we will remain constant unchanging steadfast and stable in jesus name but actually such a thing takes courage courage in uh, that brings us now to point number two the courage of a fixed heart the courage of a fixed heart it is a person that has courage that will not be changing with all the facts and fashions of the world with all the false doctrines coming on the campus that fellow will have courage knowing that the lord is with him that's why we're told in proverbs chapter 24 verse 21 proverbs 24 21 my son fear thou the king fear thou the lord and the king meddle not with them that are given to change be courageous don't let them intimidate you why is it that somebody that is following the devil will intimidate somebody following the lord if it is true that christ is greater than the devil and christ lives in you and satan operates in them how is it somebody that has christ has the holy spirit has the word of god will still be intimidated by the people that are shallow and empty and filled only with satanic spirit we should be so courageous that no matter who no matter how no matter where we will stand on the word of god that we have known and you will not meddle with them that are giving to change sometimes you'll find a, a fellow student he will look at you or she will look at you in a particular way some people will just melt because a fellow student looks at them and they think in their mind the way that student is looking at me he does not approve of my being a christian of my being a child of god and just because of the look of a sinner then this so-called believer will just melt away and then he'll be feeling sorry for himself or she'll be having self-pity and say why did i even give myself to the lord look at the way they are looking at me now you cannot stand courageously boldly against the ordinary look of a wretched sinner i believe you will stand i said i believe you will stand it takes courage and the spirit of the lord that dwells in us is uh, is not a spirit of timidity and of fear they will not be able to intimidate you in jesus name in uh, in second timothy chapter one reading from verse seven for god has not given us the spirit of fear that also means timidity he has not given us the spirit of fear we do not tremble before the unbelievers are you able to stand by your conviction before the unbeliever comes to ask you will you come to the dancing hall you are the one to even preach the gospel to him before he comes 
Don't allow them to intimidate you. And stand boldly and clearly for the conviction you have. You will not do it in a rude way. You will not do it in an impolite manner. You will not do it in an insensible manner. But you will do it firmly. Because the Lord God of heaven has not given us the spirit of fear. But of power. And of love. And of a sound mind. That means, therefore, we will stand on the truth of the word of God. And we will not allow anyone anywhere coming from which, whichever place to intimidate us. Acts chapter 4. Reading from verse 18. Acts 4, 18. And he called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor teach in the name of Jesus. The council called them. If anybody could have intimidated, intimidated anyone, these councils could have intimidated the apostles. But the apostles now had the Holy Spirit within them. They called them and they said, Do not speak at all anymore in this name, in the name of Jesus. Verse 19. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God, to hearken unto you, more than unto God, judge ye, but as for us, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. That's boldness. That's courage. They remained constant with the Lord because they were courageous and bold. In Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5 verse 27. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, did not we strictly command you that you should not teach in this name? Were you not the same people who warned earlier not to mention the name of Jesus, not to serve the Lord, not to preach that name? You see, sometimes our parents may even do that. And he may say, I will deny you of a lot of things I should have given you if you do not stop calling on the Lord. If you do not stop calling upon this Lord Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And then they said, did we not command you? And not just ordinary command, strictly and strictly, firmly, did we not command you that we should not teach in this name? And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine, and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. Peter again, verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said we ought to obey god rather than men he was courageous what did they do to them they beat them look at verse 40 and him to him they agreed as to gamelian and when they had called the apostles and beating them they commanded them that they should not speak in the name of jesus and he let them go they punished them persecution and they departed from the presence of the council rejoicing they were not sorrowful they were not mourning they were not pitying themselves they were not wondering why did this happen to me i took my stand for the lord and yet look at what came on me rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for a sake and they lay in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach jesus christ exactly what they told them not to do exactly what they commanded them not to do exactly what they threatened and he said if you do that again we're going to deal more with you but in the temple and in every house they did not stop teaching preaching jesus christ and so you will see that if you are really a child of god you should be courageous and bold to follow that which is right and your heart will be fixed to keep on following the Lord. Acts chapter 21, from verse 10. Acts 21, verse 10. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said thus says the holy ghost so shall the jews of jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle, and shall deliver him into the hands of the gentiles and when we heard these things both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to jerusalem 
What intimidates some people is what they call prophecy or dream. And a fellow student in another fellowship may come to you as a student and say, I had a dream concerning you. I saw that uh, you now wanted to practice uh, this Christianity in a very serious way. And in that revelation God gave me, I saw that there was a lot of persecution against you. And I know that whenever God gives me a prophecy like that, uh, you really need to take care because, uh, you know, I have the gift of revelation, prophecy, whatever tongues, interpretation. And then some people are intimidated because of that. Here a prophet came named Agabus. And when he got there, he demonstrated his revelation. He demonstrated the prophecy. And while they were looking at him, he took Paul's girdle, he bound himself hand and feet. And then he said, Thus says the Holy Ghost. He didn't say, Thus says Agabus. It was coming from the Holy Ghost. It was even a genuine vision and revelation. Thus says the Holy Ghost, So shall they bind the Jews in Jerusalem, bind the man that owneth this girdle. And everybody knew that that thing belonged to Paul. And they began to cry, they began to weep, and they began to beg him, hey, don't go to Jerusalem. It's going to mean a lot of suffering. Look at verse 13. Then Paul answered, What mean ye? To weep and to break my heart. For I am ready not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. Courage, boldness. He had courage, he followed the Lord in verse 14. When we would not, when he would not be persuaded, we ceased saying the will of the Lord be done. You see, if you are really going to follow the Lord, number one, there should be constancy. Number two, there should be courage. Come back to Daniel, Daniel chapter 3. In Daniel chapter 3, Nebuchadnezzar had built, had erected a great image. And he wanted everybody to bow down and worship. And he told them the signs they will see. The sounds they will hear. And if they saw that sign, if they heard that sound, everybody was to fall down and worship. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they refused to bow down. And so, some people reported them in chapter 3 of Daniel, verse 12. Then there are certain Jews whom thou hast said over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Of course, that made Nebuchadnezzar angry. Look at verse 13. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, he was going to give them a second chance. He was going to tell them, Think over it very well, because this thing you are doing is rebellion against me. When I say you worship idol, forget your religion and worship the idol that I command you to worship. And therefore he said, I am angry, furious, unhappy with you. If you will make up your mind and change, that will be all right. I'll pardon your immaturity and your foolishness and your childishness. But if you say that you are going to carry on that same religion that you had before you came to my land here, I'm going to so deal with you, you will feel sorry for yourself. I'm going to get a lesson out of you that other people will learn and nobody will think of rebelling against my order anymore. Verse 15. Now, if you be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet and the flute and the harp, sackbut, sacktree, dulcim, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have set, which I have made, well, I'll forget the past. I'll just say, that was childishness, now you have changed your mind. But if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a burning fairy furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands? He talked like a man in authority. 
final authority. A person that will do something and nobody will check up what are you doing there. And he said, don't you know me? Don't you know my authority? Don't you know my power? Don't you know that the law of the land gives me final authority and there is no court of appeal? And there is no God that can change my mind? If you will not do this thing and worship the idol that I have made, I will cast you into the burning fairy furnace and tell me, will that God come down from heaven to come and deliver you? Be very careful what you are doing because you are going to waste your life. He threatened them. Intimidation. And you see unbelievers are specialists in intimidation. But if you have courage of a fixed heart and you say you want to worship the Lord, the power of the devil will not overcome you in Jesus' name. Verse 16, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. No argument. All we are saying is we want to serve the Lord. And anywhere we are, we are going to serve the Lord. The earth is the Lord. And the fullness thereof. God created even this territory. We are on, the, on God's land. God's territory. Although this is not our native land. Although it appears to be a foreign land. We say foreign in relation to ourselves. But not foreign in relation to God. God made everything. And we are going to pay homage. And we are going to worship. And we are going to serve that God. In verse 17. If it be so. Our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fairy furnace and he will deliver us out of thine hand O king then he said we're not serving God because of bread and butter we're not serving God because of miracles we're not serving God because he will not allow us to see persecution at all we're not serving us be serving God because of uh, you know what these other people are saying prosperity 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 that if you are poor then you are not a christian if you have any problem then you are not a christian if there is persecution then you are not a christian if there is suffering then you are not a christian and if you do not command for that nebuchadnezzar to come out of the way and for you to be the head and rule over babylon then they say you are not a christian they say the winner's language that if you are a christian you are the winner everywhere if you have any problem at all it means you are not a christian these people did not believe that. It's a lie. Because everyone that will live godly will suffer persecution. Have we read that in the Bible? So in verse 17 they said, As for God, He's able to deliver us. He has the power. He has the ability. He can do it. Because there is nothing He cannot do. Then they said, But if God decides not to. Verse 18. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. That thing annoyed Nebuchadnezzar. I wish you were there. I'm happy you are not there. You know, if you were there, you will see the face of Nebuchadnezzar. That man, he was angry. His countenance changed. He trembled with anger. Verse 19. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. He was furious before. Now he was not full of fury. And uh, the form of his business was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He had never encountered any group of people like this before that would challenge his authority. Therefore, he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont usual to be heated. And he commanded the most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and to cast them into the burning fairy furnace. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosing, and their hands, and their undergarments, and were cast into the midst of the burning fairy furnace. You see that? God was still waiting. He was still going to do something. You don't look at the beginning of a matter and make your conclusion. And think because the fire started burning, 
because they have eaten it seven times before they, because they have bound the people because they are going to throw them in because they are preparing to do it that then it means god will not do anything wait until the end of the story and you will see that our god will never fail in verse 22 therefore because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot the flame of fire slew those men that stood that took up shadak meshach and abednego even the people that didn't enter into the fire the flame that came out of the furnace when they were at the edge of the furnace to throw them in the flame just killed them they died and then if that happened to the people that didn't enter into the furnace what will happen to the people that were thrown into the furnace but these three men shadrach meshach and abednego fell down bound into the midst of the burning fairy furnace then nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and he spake and said to his counselors did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire they answered and said unto the king true o king he said he answered and said no come and look at what i see i see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire and they have no hurt and the form of the fourth is like tell me out loud the son of god <laughs> some of our friends say that god has no son and nebuchadnezzar the idol worshiper said you are educated you went to university even me idol worshiper he said i know that god has a son but all that you have read you don't know that god has a son and if you are more ignorant than Nebuchadnezzar, I pity you. Your certificate doesn't have any value. Now, here Nebuchadnezzar, he said, the appearance of the fourth one is like the Son of God. And then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the bony fairy furnace and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the most high god did he call them shadrach meshach and abednego my slaves captives no he said you are the servants of the most high god come forth and come hither the same commandment that threw them in that same personal commanded you can now come out the lord will be with you the lord will support you the lord will oversee everything and that furnace will not burn you in jesus name then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth in the, of the midst of the fire. And the princes and the governors and the captains and the king's counselors, being uh, gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an air of their head seemed. Neither were they, their coats changed, nor the smell of the fire had passed on them. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, that trusted in him, and have changed the king's word, and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god. They were bold. They were courageous. And now that brought a conviction in even the land in, the, in Babylon. Therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, language, which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces. And their houses shall be made a donkey home, because there is no other God. Nebuchadnezzar said, there is no other God. The one who was saying before, who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand? Now because of the courage and the boldness of these people who were having a fixed heart, he now said, there is no other God that can deliver after this sort and what then happened verse 30 then the king promoted shadrach meshach and abednego in the province of babylon after the persecution because of the fixed heart promotion came i pray that promotion will come to you in jesus name 
Now point number three, continuity. Continuity of a fixed heart. Actually, how you know that a person's heart is fixed is that he continues to serve the Lord. He doesn't change doctrine every year. He doesn't change his uh, commitment every three, three years. He doesn't say, now I'm in university. This is my conviction. When I pass out, I will have another set of convictions. He had the same conviction. You have the same conviction. Other people, because I'm still young and I'm looking for job, praying, and I want the Lord to answer my prayer, this is my conviction and consecration. After I've got the job, after I've built a house, after I've married, when I have got children, and when I become an important personality in a particular state, of course you know that I have to change. Because you know now, since I am a Christian, and I'm now in this exalted position in my state or in my country, I cannot continue the same way. You don't have a fixed heart. A person that has a fixed heart, he knows that whatever position he occupies in society, the Lord knows about that position, and yet the Lord has given his word, you remain constant, you remain courageous, and continue with a fixed heart to follow the Lord. Continuity of a fixed heart. In John chapter 8, John chapter 8, reading from verse 29, And he that sent me is with me. The Father has not let me alone. For I do always those things that please him. He continued. The Lord didn't change. He continued that same conviction. What the Father had told him, he pleased the Lord every time. As he spoke these words, many believed on him. Then Jesus said, Jesus said to the Jews who believed on him, If ye continue in my word, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed if you change then you are not the disciples of the lord you know that you know all that the lord has taught he has taught us about humility he has taught us about obedience he has taught us about loving our enemies he has taught us about purity of heart and purity of life he has taught us that if you are born again your life will change you are the salt of the earth and you are the light of the world he has taught us that you will endure you will bear the cross and you'll follow after him he has taught us that if you are a child of god you are not of the world as he was not of the world he has taught us that you will deny yourself if you do not follow the teachings of the lord you were following before but now you say, well, uh, because of uh, my new status now, my new position now, I cannot continue to do that. Then you cease to be the disciple of the Lord. Verse 31 again. Then said Jesus to those Jews, which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. The Lord wants us to continue. In Acts chapter 13, Acts 13, 43. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God, the grace that comes into our lives and teaches us that we deny ungodliness and we deny worldly lust and we be sober, to the righteous will live justly unblameably he says continue in that grace of the lord continue in the grace of god continuity that's the mark of the steadfast soul that's the mark of the fixed heart in revelation chapter 2 verse 25 and verse 26 but that which ye have had already hold fast till i come Hold fast, not just to the end of your period, your time, in your institution, or college, or university. Hold fast, not just to the point when you are now getting married. Hold fast, not just to the point when you get a job. Hold fast, well, not when you become 40 or 45, but hold fast till I come. In verse 26, and he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end. Keepeth my works unto the end. 
To him will I give power over the nations. Chapter 3 of Revelation. Verses 10 and 11. Because thou hast kept the watch of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast, which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Continuity. Hold it fast, and hold it fast until he comes. In First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4, verse 16. Take heed to thyself. And to the doctrine continue in them. Have a fixed heart. Be a stable soul. Be steadfast and unmovable. Continue in them. For in doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Continuity. In Second Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. Second Timothy. Chapter 3, verse 15. 14, rather. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learnt, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learnt them. Continue thou in the things which thou hast learnt, and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learnt them. As we bring the thing to a conclusion, I want to end with a story in chapter 35 of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 35. This one sums up everything. It talks about people that had fixed hearts. They had been taught the way of the Lord. And here you can see the constancy of a fixed heart. Here you can see also the courage of a fixed heart. And here you can see the continuity of a fixed heart all together in this single story. Actually, it was a test for these people. And Jeremiah was sent to them by the Lord himself that will bring a test upon them so that the Lord could use that event and that experience in this place to bring a lesson to the house of Israel and also to the church of today. In Jeremiah chapter 35 from verse 1. The word which came unto Jeremiah. From the Lord in the days of Jehoiakim son, the son of Josiah king of Judah, saying, Go unto the house of the Rechabites, and speak unto them, and bring them into the house of the Lord, into one of the chambers, and give them wine to drink. Here was a test for the sons of the Rechabites. And the test came from a national figure, a respected figure, a respected prophet, an exalted preacher, a person that was well known, renowned personality, Jeremiah. At the time of Jeremiah, he was the most respected person and he had the word of God. Everybody knew that he had been a prophet. In fact, the Lord said he had appointed him and separated him to be a prophet even before he was born. He was born by a priest. But he really did not function in the priest's office. The Lord moved him higher than the ministry of his father, a priest. And then now he became a prophet. And he prophesied in difficult times. And everybody knew that even Jeremiah himself was a man of strong conviction. There is no time to read all the references to you. But even when they persecuted him, he said, Whatever you will do to me, do unto me, and declare unto you the word of the Lord. It was such a prophet, well known, nationally known, renowned, respected, exalted man of God that God used in bringing a test to these people, the house of the Rechabites. And he said, I command you, Jeremiah, go to the house of the Rechabites and put this test before them. Don't tell them it is a test. Just act normally. And tell them, you are the prophet, they will know you. You tell them that they should drink wine. 
Look at verse 3. Then I took Jezaniah, the son of Jeremiah, and uh, the son of Abazaniah, and his brethren, and all his sons, and the whole house of the Rechabites. And I brought them into the house of the Lord. It wasn't even in a nightclub. It wasn't in a shrine. It wasn't in an ordinary building. Into the house of the Lord. Into the chamber of the sons of Anan. The son of Igdaniah. A man of God. He invited another person there. Other people there that were of note. Their presence, were, their presence was witchy, which was by the chamber of the princes, which was above the chamber of Maesir, the son of Shalom, the keeper of the door. And I said before the sons of the house of the Rechabites, pots full of wine and cups. The wine was free, the cup was free, and it was coming from Jeremiah prophetic sanctified wine and i said unto them drink ye wine but they said we will drink no wine we respect you we know you are a great prophet we know you are nationally recognized we know you preach the word of god we know that you are higher than we are we know that you know more than we know but we are sorry we will drink no wine why? For Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commanded us, saying, Ye shall drink no wine, neither ye nor your sons, forever. Not only at the time when we were with our father, but forever. Constancy. And the courage to be able to face Jeremiah. And to be able to tell Jeremiah, we will drink no wine. We respect you. We appreciate you. We honor you. We know everybody exalts you. We know you are the prophet of the Lord. We know you are a full-time preacher. We know all the good things about you. But we will drink no wine. Verse 7. Neither shall ye build house, nor sow seed, nor plant vineyard, nor have any. But all your days ye shall dwell in tents, that ye may live many days in the land where ye be strangers. Thus have we obeyed. The voice of Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, in all that he charged us to drink no wine, all our days we, our wives, our sons, nor our daughters, when their father commanded them, they were not married at that time. But he told them, when you get married, the people you get married to must be the people that will share the same conviction. You cannot marry someone that will change this conviction that will say, well, I am your wife now and if you love me, you will have to change that thing and do as I want to say. The, when, the Lord, when our father told us, we are not married then. But now our sons, our daughters, our wives were keeping to that conviction. Can you see continuity there? Because of that, the blessing of the Lord came upon them. Verse 18. And Jeremiah said unto the house of the Rechabites, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, because ye have obeyed the commandment of Jonadab your father, and kept all his precepts, and done according to all that he has commanded you. Therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Jonadab, the son of Rechab, shall not lack, shall not miss, shall not want a man to stand before me forever everlasting blessing because of constancy because of courage because of continuity i believe your children of god and your children of blessing and the lord has a lot of blessings waiting for you he wants to take over your life and control your life and guide your life and bless your life abundantly from now on till you see him face to face he loves you and he wants his love to be everlasting upon you he wants to pick you as an instrument and shake this nation and bless this nation and preach the gospel and cover the land with the gospel as the waters cover the ocean 
He wants to do something definite through your life, but it's going to require a fixed heart, constant, courageous, continuing. I believe you can do it. You can be faithful. And you can tell the Lord, O oh Lord, I received the Lord during this Congress. I do not want to fall today, tomorrow, next week, or next month, or next year. By the time we come here the fourth next year, if Jesus tarries, I will be found constant, courageous, continuing in the grace of the Lord, in the word of the Lord, in the face of the Lord, in the conviction that I've learned here, in the experiences that God has given me here, constant, courageous, continuing. My heart is fixed. My heart is fixed, O oh Lord. I will serve you. I will worship you. I will obey you. I will stand against temptation. I will stand in persecution. I will not join the other bad people, the gangs, the ladies, the men, to change conviction or to do evil. I will not be unstable. I will not use my devotion to the Lord, my consecration to the Lord. And I will preach the gospel. I will not allow anything to take away this word from me. Constant, courageous, continuing. My heart is fixed. My heart is fixed. In a time of temptation, I will stand. In a time of persecution, I will stand. I will not be intimidated by the enemy.